the site is at risk of being inundated by the Hudson River, only a few hundred feet away. Many people aren't aware that this site at one point was underwater. It was, it's landfill. Over time, docks and wharves and landfill slowly increased the tip of Lower Manhattan. What this means is that the site that was occupied by the World Trade Center is literally in water. To build the world's tallest towers on land like this, engineers had to find a way to keep the river out. They came up with an ingenious idea. This entire complex was built inside what we call a slurry wall. The slurry wall encircled the World Trade Center complex like an enormous bathtub. The bathtub where the World Trade Center site was built within, and it essentially kept out the Hudson River, it kept out all the wet soil surrounding the site. The slurry wall was made up of over 100 panels, each one 22 feet wide and seven stories deep, going all the way down two feet below bedrock. Each section was excavated and filled with a gluey clay mixture called slurry, which keeps silty soil and water from getting in. Next, a 70-foot-long steel frame weighing 22 tons was lowered into the slurry-filled panel. Concrete was slowly pumped into the panel, and the slurry, which is much lighter, rose to the surface and was pumped out. When the concrete hardened, they repeated the process over and over again, forming a massive underground wall. Once the wall is built, they proceed with the installation of tie bags. These tie bags actually hold the wall to the rock. Tie bags are long steel rods that go all the way down to bedrock to support the wall. They become diagonal structural elements that pull the wall to the rock. So the whole site is basically a bathtub pushing back the waters of the Hudson. After 9-11, it looked as though this enormous bathtub might have been weakened and could collapse. There was real concern that this wall was going to be breached. These walls are coming in. They moved in about six inches. And this, these walls hold back the river. So if these walls cave in, this place is going to get flooded out by the river. A disaster that was already incalculable in terms of the human loss and the, the loss to just lower Manhattan and New York City would have gotten that much worse. Securing the slurry wall became a top priority. Soon, engineers discovered that the 1.8 million tons of debris filling the bathtub were actually preventing it from collapsing. The debris was actually acting as a barrier to keep the wall in place. That's why we couldn't just remove all the debris. We have to remove it in lifts, in pieces. And we did this like a mining operation around the entire pit. And every elevation of debris we removed, we had to install new time bags. Once the new time bags were installed, we felt more comfortable that the wall was now secured properly, was structurally sound. A new liner wall was built right in front of the original. But a section of the old one has been left exposed as a reminder of what happened here. The very last piece of steel to be removed from the site, the last column, was removed on May 30th of 2002, and it signified the end of the recovery period. The recovery period is over. The slurry wall secured. Nearly two million tons of debris removed. Now, the site is empty. There is a gaping hole in the New York City skyline, and no one can agree on how to fill it. Everyone had a different...